Welcome to the new episode of this segment, Empower Your Life, where the aim is to bring positivity, motivation, encouragement, and inspiration towards your goals or dreams that you wanted to pursue for a very long time. Now, the next guest that I'm going to interview, she's the founder of the Legacy Edge based in Singapore, and she's also the uh, finalist for the awards of six Asia Trusted Life Agents and Advisors Awards 2021 across 12 or 12 markets or countries with 280 submissions. I'm pretty honored actually to um, to have her having her interview her at this point. We're going to talk about not only how her business started, her story, but we're also going to talk about how to be wise with money. So personally, I believe that it's wise to know where we at in terms of financial success. It's an important part to understand ourselves and how to spend our money. From there, we can adjust and also uh, practice towards good habits for financial success. So without further ado, let's all welcome Michelle Lee. Hi, Michelle. Hello, everybody. Yay! Thank you so much. Yeah, it's an honor to be invited to this. Oh, thank you, thank you. I, I'm honored to have you here in our segment, uh, Empower Your Life. And I'm looking forward to, to get to know a little bit story about this awards that you just mentioned. So how are you and how's, how's Singapore? I'm doing good. Uh, Singapore is fine. We have very good governance. And of course, uh, we have this pandemic that is affecting globally. But everybody is, you know, following the rules and um, staying, just staying home. The, the recently, there, there was a, a transition, right? Because this, you started from, I mean, for a couple of months, it's been relaxed. And yep. just recently, it changed to phase, what, Two. phase three? Yeah, so how did you feel about that? I think that is, is a good call to do this. Uh-huh. It's for the safety and the well-being of the majority. I think it's about, you know, making small sacrifices now rather mm-hmm. than, you know, things get out of control later in the later part of the year. Um, yeah. You know, i rather, you know, follow, you know, have some, um, some guidelines, some restrictions now than have a full restriction where for a longer time. Yeah, so mm-hmm. it's a, chicken and egg thing yeah so i'm managing it well okay so are my friends and you know my clients because we've been through this you know almost yes. like one, like one year ago mm-hmm. right this is like on the reset button you know like for people yeah. who, you know we have heard of story, heard of story people who lost weight during this period of time to the people who mm-hmm. gain weight so for people who gain weight or didn't re- realize their goals during the period of rest then perhaps it's just another chance again. Yes, I think it's just, we just keep moving forward, whatever happens, no? Uh, as I was doing the business, the life insurance business, I realized that there was a very huge gap in terms of uh, wealth distribution. People mm-hmm. were so uh, preoccupied with you know buying products, planning for their future, but nobody plans what happens to the money in the event that they are no longer around. And of course, death is guaranteed. But what I realized from my own personal experience is I have seen, you know, personally and also my clients, how family fall apart because uh, instructions were not clear in terms Mm -hmm. of how assets were to be distributed. And because of this, it caused a lot of uh, disharmony and distrust among family. And sadly, they all fall apart. Yes, so that's agree. what I wanted to do, you know, uh, by setting up Legacy Age to, uh, you know, become a one-stop station for clients in terms of their financial needs and especially in, in, the, in the area of wealth distribution. And apparently, research and survey has, it has been done. More than, you know, 90%, 80 to 90% of Singaporeans have not done a will. Right, and this is one. This is the basis of things that uh, needs to be done uh, before anyone uh, start planning. Right, like what yeah. uh, what we have learned. Or it's always important to begin with an end in mind when people yeah. plan for their retirement. or Whatever, yeah, great. But what is the end? You know, what happens to all this when uh, it's guaranteed that one day will not be around? Yes, I think we still believe that we are not gonna die. We're not ready to talk about death. I think that's one of the reasons why the will 
it's not as common or exposed or open for everybody that you know you have to be ready that especially nowadays right yeah we won't know what will happen next so yeah. i think this is a perfect time for everybody who's currently financially stable and maybe it's the right time to do such thing and yeah so i hope um, everyone who's listening right now will consider that if you think you're financially stable then perhaps uh, start to do or figure out how to write a will so apart from that uh, of course where yeah. so, within so. your family you also mentioned before that because this is pretty much a reflection from your life where you built this company right yeah okay so scientifically we is a known fact that women live longer than men yeah so my grandfather was a really hardworking man. He built a business. He built multiple business, and he had he has seven children, right? And he just left suddenly without a will because as typical Asians, you know, we are very superstitious about such things. So when when the moment that he's gone, um, things start to fall apart because there was no, uh, there wasn't a clear instructions of how the business would be distributed, etc. Right, mm -hmm. and I saw how my grandmother um, broke apart. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, we even flew all the way to Australia as an extended family to see how they want to distribute the bank account that my my grandfather has. You know, fixed deposit. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine, like? 30, 40 years ago, fixed deposit in the country was like, uh, it can be like 7 to 11% and the power of compounding interest, right, can amount to a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So, uh, of course, there were a lot of disagreements and um, my grandmother, the poor lady, okay, uh, in her 80s, I remember waking up in the middle of the night with her crying and oh. asking me, am I a bad, bad mother? Am I unfair? What mm -hmm. should I do with all this, you know? Now that my husband is gone, I do not know how I want to manage this, you know, conflict among my children fighting over things, right? Yeah. So this is one poor example of how uh, proper estate planning is not done and cause so much um, turmoil in the family. Versus, mm -hmm. you know, I've seen my uh, godfather, okay, her, mm -hmm. his family, his father, uh, tycoon, you know, he, he planned so well, okay equally and all this and till today 30 years after he's gone his family his his children are all in uh, very good terms That's right true. they don't fight over anything because before the dad was gone he make it known of where his things should go to who and you know there's no uh area of uh dispute at all there's no mm -hmm. way it was so clear and everybody accepted it yeah there was consensus of how things would go uh when he's not around mm -hmm. so you see same um, family asset, but um, how things turn out is so different. On my side, is everybody is not on talking terms and left a very bitter taste. On the yeah. other side, you know they are all so united and they, they they are still in good terms and still talk to each other. So then I realized that wow, really proper estate planning can help to you know help to glue oh, nice. yes to glue family for many years or to tear them apart is yeah so it really depends on what matters to you if you have if you have no family then okay by all means but you have children as parents i'm very sure okay is every parents uh wish that they want to see their children um in very good and loving terms now you manage to have this legacy edge and you yourself i mean this is just like a side question so have you prepared for yourself in case <laughs> Oh no, yeah, not yet. I've done so. <laughs> yeah, and I'll do review it on an annual basis. Yeah, so that is another misconception. People write a will and they just forget. They think that once they write a will, that's it. I don't have to change it. But life circumstances can change. A newborn mm -hmm. comes to the family or you travel out of country or you have a change of, uh, you know, marital status. Yeah, all this will have to review your will. Yes. And you mentioned that everyone believes, or I think I also believe in that when you write a will, you have to have a lawyer, which is a oh. misconception, right? Yeah, there's another misconception. In fact, anybody can write their own will. Mm -hmm. okay? You just have to ensure that everything is in, in, in sequel. Okay? Mm -hmm. They are according to the law in Singapore and um, it's enforceable. And of course, um, two most important thing is that your weaknesses, you know, two weaknesses cannot be your beneficiaries 
Okay. Yeah. Yes. And they have weakness at the same time. So there are some, you know, um, mistakes that people commonly make when they write their own will. So it's still encouraged to get uh, professional help mm -hmm. for that. Yeah. Okay. Great to know the, the story behind the Legacy Edge. So let's talk about something exciting about these awards that you just recently mentioned. So share us a little bit about that. Uh, I got nominated to this award uh, because of my achievements last year. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got the call of the table under the million dollar million dollar round table. Okay, it's an award uh, given in the US. So to financial advisors. So it represents about the top 3% of financial advisors in the world. And I think last year, due to the pandemic, okay, I saw mm -hmm. how uh, people are so lack of uh, financial literacy, especially mm -hmm. women. Uh, but for me, uh, before the pandemic, okay, mm -hmm. I've never been um, prominent online because yes. my business even today is strongly uh, dependent, uh, I mean strongly from uh, word of mouth referral That's good. Oh. yeah and my client group is always uh is usually between late 30s mid, mid to late 30s all the way to uh, 60s so this uh this form the main bulk of my clients the average age of my clients should be about 40 plus okay okay so i do not have a lot of young clients basically it's because i realized that there's a lack of uh education okay and yeah. awareness yeah so during pandemic uh especially during the circuit breaker Okay, where there was a lockdown, mm -hmm. uh, I used my time to educate and share and reach out to these people. I mean, I didn't reach out to them, but you know, with my content, they were yes. excited and they enjoy my content a lot. So I thought uh, with this, you know, within a period of I think six months to eight months, I have uh, more than 10,000 followers. Okay, I think wow. I have many plus um, from all over the world. I make wow. new friends, you know, uh, on Instagram. They all and and they do translate to real life friends, real life friends. Um, and of course, what I did is started webinars, okay, mm -hmm. to show how to invest. And I donated all the proceeds to uh, United Women Singapore, as well as uh, Children uh, Singapore Children Society, right? Mm -hmm. And. Yeah, they were so grateful because I didn't. It didn't occur to me that the pandemic has affected these charity organizations uh, pretty much as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Because due to pay cuts and how corporates are, you know, uh, cutting down their costs, so donations were also pretty much affected. So yeah. I was happy that uh, me and my followers were were able to contribute in a way, uh, and where they learn and I get to share and everyone benefits. It's always good to have a win-win situation, but at the same time, you also, it's a very big heart for you to, to share or uh, give the proceeds to the charities. I think uh, that's, that's a good, uh, good work. And I, I totally agree with you because uh, from the last uh, episode that I had, so they are actually working for a non nonprofit organization. And they mentioned that, yes, it's actually two things that people are becoming more conscientious or conscious with how they spend or to, to what they spend, but also they have becoming more uh, understanding, especially for people who are at need. In this case, this nonprofit uh, project that I have interviewed, they are helping people with, uh, or children with cancer. People still help actually. And I think it's good and very, very, very kind heart of of you to to give the proceeds to to them god bless you <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you you advocate uh, empowering women to start investing build passive income so share us a little bit why you come up with that and how is things going and yeah I've been an advocate of investing and I've been an investor since young. Mm -hmm. Then I realized that as a woman myself, my peers are not, my peers who are women are not investing and I'm always in a crowd of men when it comes mm -hmm. to investment. And women are so good at, at saving, right? But saving mm -hmm. is not going to help us achieve our financial goals uh, as quick as investing, right? Because of inflation and also the power of compounding interest that investment can give. 
Yes. So um, as I was posting, posing about uh, when as I posted about my results and my achieve like my achievement and how I help people to grow their money successfully, more women start to get uh interested. Okay, they reach out mm-hmm. to me and say that hey, they have never encountered and realize that how invest me investment can change their life in such a way mm-hmm. and accelerate their you know financial goals. So for me, I realized that women are very skeptical to uh, investing. They think that mm-hmm. um, it's a very high risk thing and it's for men because uh, as women they they are they think that they are more emotional, you know, which is true. Okay, and this is the part that I come in, you know, I help to manage their emotions and educate them on um, different cycles of investment and how to use the cycles of investment to take take advantage of it and, you know, value add to our portfolio, yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, slowly, you know, when women, when, when they reach out to me and they was like, oh, this is, I'm so nervous, this is my first time uh, mm-hmm. investing, you know, I can't. Uh, wait to see how this will work out for me, etc. And it, it, it just excites me and you know I feel very proud when they take their first step out of their comfort zone. Um mm-hmm. take charge of their finances because usually they will be like, oh uh, let me ask my husband, uh, you know, can I just yeah. pass my money to you? Or they will say things like can I just pass my money to you so that uh, you can you can just do it for me. Mm-hmm. Tell me like hey you know that's not the right thing to do and you know if you do this you are prone to scammers, right? Not that I'm a scammer, but you put so much trust in me. Uh, you know, this why if this person just run away with your money. Like my job here is to teach you how to fish. So that in the event, you know, um when I'm not around or when you have no one to turn to, you, you are independent. And that's what mm-hmm. I want for women to be independent investors. You know, and eventually, you know, when we have a community, we can share ideas like what we've learned and we become better together. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with you on that 100%. And I totally agree that when you kind of a little, not a little bit skeptical, but it's too risky. And because you don't have business oriented in mind as well, that kind of give, give women or myself to be specific to kind of just jump you know, and it's, it's becoming more incredible and also inspiring to have a woman, so like you, that will be leading us. Okay, you don't have to, like what you said, uh, you can't, I can't trust 100% just give my money to you because in every investment, there comes a responsibility, yeah, right? Definitely. <laughs> So, and uh, I think there's a lot of combination making our lives more complex in a way that before most of the women, <clears throat> most of the women don't have like rights and slowly mm-hmm. we are becoming, yeah. uh, having the rights with all of this, it becomes fair between yeah. men and women, but we are not fully ready. Most of us not fully ready. Some of us chose to be whatever this, the usual tradition or culture standard, like, okay, you're going to be housewife, but at the same time, you, it doesn't mean that being a housewife, you cannot make an investment. Yeah. So do you happen to have a client like that, that she's an, uh, she's, a, she's housewife and obviously, uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it depends with the couple. Oh, my right? sister is one. <laughs> <laughs> So how did you convince in terms of like, you gotta try to invest? No, I, I've said, look, uh, what's the worst can happen? Just invest something that you can afford to lose. Not that I say that you will lose. Mm-hmm. I mean, people who lost money eventually have to learn that either you pay the school fees to get to learn from someone or you pay the school mm-hmm. fees to learn by yourself. So I'm there to guide along. Uh, eventually, of course, out of 10 investments, it's not it's impossible to have 10 of them making money, right? We have to look at the overall portfolio. Are they, as long as the overall is healthy, they, they make money as an overall, then it's good enough. They don't seek for perfection. That's a problem no. with some women. They, they seek for perfection. They want everything to be in profit. Like how they manage their household is different for investment, right? And you know, they like, you know, typical house. I have to check in every day. You know, I have to check in every day. No, investment don't work like this. Think about this. Okay, if you if for people who have ever been to casino, right? The mm-hmm. longer you sit at the playing playing deck, right? As the longer you sit, the more you lose your money. Agree? 
you mm -hmm. usually make money in the first few uh maybe half an hour, right? But you realize that the longer you sit at the playing at the gambling desk, the more mm -hmm. you lose, right? The dealer always wins, right? But in investment is the opposite. When you start to invest, you don't see immediate returns, right? Like it's like planting a tree. The longer you stay invested, the more money you see that you will make. Yeah. So that's the difference. I think the the one of the reasons, and this is I'm answering on behalf of myself, is the risk of losing the amount of money, you know. But you mentioned that you don't have to put up money for investment that you are not willing to do so. So let's say I'm just capable of investing for two, five, ten, twenty, or maximum fifty dollars. Do you think that there will be some kind of invest investments open for that amount of money where women will be open to kind of invest with small amount of money. Definitely, you can buy shares. You can buy shares that is 20 USD or 5 USD or whatever, you know, like uh, maybe I think you can look at uh, maybe General Electric, right? Mm -hmm. you know, I think for $50, you can buy two or three shares of the company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then okay. you are a shareholder already. <laughs> Okay. All right. So that's good to know. And then on um, proceeding on how to make sure that you're not making yourself thinking too much, then this is where all these webinars, courses, or learnings that you're providing. So we don't freak out. Yeah. Don't freak out. You know, there's always someone <laughs> to guide you along uh -huh. and um, to ensure that you are not doing the wrong things. You are in good hands. <laughs> that's good that's like good. learning to walk Cindy you know when you know as a kid when we walk right we are bound we bound to trip a bit you know mm -hmm. in ourselves and some abrasions and that's that's about investing you know it's about going through the cycle and still persevere and continue to do what you do and eventually you build a strong portfolio yes it's about taking baby steps Basically, we're going to talk about on the personal basis, right? Of course, you have all of this experience in life in terms of savings. So share us for everyone listening or for the viewers, what will be your five saving tricks on day-to-day -day expenses? Okay, firstly, you know, when I get my pay, I save 80% of my income. Wow. Okay, I put it into investments, okay? No matter what, you know, whether it's up or down market, I just... On that date, you know, of my pay, I'll just invest. I'll just mm -hmm. save, save it, okay? So, that is number one. Okay, number two, I live below my needs, okay? So, what does that mean? It means that I don't um, spend uh, more than $20 at a cafe. You know, I don't eat mm -hmm. out as often unless it's special occasion. Mm -hmm. And I encourage my friends to not overspend when they're out with me. Yes. Right? Because... Coming from a poor family, uh, you know, in the past, we know that $20, you know, for a poor student or family, they can get by for at least two to three weeks. Definitely. Okay. Mm -hmm. You need to understand that. And you need to how to you need to learn to treasure and appreciate money. No, I'm not saying that you become a miser and you know become so stingy on yourself, you don't pamper yourself. I still do, right? Because it's all our hard work, you know, and I, I do this by uh, getting from the profits of my investment. I do uh, I do sell some of my profits so that I can pamper myself, etc. So another thing is I always compare, right? When I buy things online. Okay. Like how to compare? Like the price-wise? Yeah, the price-wise. Okay, I'll look at the price. Number one, I see that is this website a scam? <laughs> True. Yeah, okay. You have to bear in mind, right? So I tend to compare and also look for deals. I download like uh, apps. Uh, I'm not sure in your country you have apps. Like, I, I, usually I just look online first. How much is it selling for? Yes, and I do the same. You know, sometimes, yeah, because sometimes we pay for convenience. Yes. Agree? Yeah. Uh, of yeah. course, most of the time I plan my things well. I don't really need it immediately. And because of that uh, time that I'm able to wait or delay my gratification, I can save at least 10 to 20%. Yeah. yeah. So that, that is what I do. Okay, yeah, number, I, yeah. Yeah. Go on. Sorry. Number three, always budget. I always give uh, every dollar a job. Mm -hmm. Okay. They have a role to play. 
Okay. okay. I don't uh I don't overspend. Okay, for example, today, oh, if I'm going to spend food, okay, uh, I'm left with this amount of money to put into this area of uh entertainment. You know, every dollar that I have has a job to play, and it's important to keep track of where your money oh, goes. Yes. But of course, yeah. you have to live in abundance, yeah. Yeah, think- there's no limit, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you because when I was uh, working in Singapore for my first five years, I'm not earning that much. I made sure that I'm not going to overspend with my salary. Uh, basically, I'm, what I'm trying to do is that every lunch, because I'm not very particular of, you know, there are some people that, oh, I have to have different food every day. Oh, no. For me, I can't. I actually, to be honest with you, my first job in Singapore, I had almost the same lunch for the last two years of my first oh, job. You? It's oh. a it's a bihon with vegetables, and that's pretty much it. Serious? That's how you stay slim, wow. Okay. Yeah, so it's like one eighty or two dollars. Wow, for lunch. that is diligence and commitment to save money. Yeah, and then when uh, slowly starting to have increment for my salary of course i indulge myself once in a while but i also track my expenses yeah and this brings me to my point number four right my Mm -hmm. what i do is that with this circuit breaker you know i mean phase two or whatever i I don't like to spend on uh, food delivery Mm -hmm. it always costs doubly or triple much I would walk my way to the nearest shop or, you know, to the groceries, make my own food, right? Yes. Here and you save more money, right? It's all about planning. You need to mm-hmm. plan ahead, you know. Yeah. So anyway, last but not least, I would, yeah. you know, I'm a, I'm a Christian. Uh, I tie 10% of my income to the church. So that is something that I do as well, okay? to give my first fruit of my label to my creator, to God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that is how I see uh, my life is in, my finances and my life is in God's hands. And I see how things that like, work out perfectly. You know, these are for believers, right? Yeah. I strongly encourage believers to tie, uh, even if they are in debts. Okay, you have some faith that um, things will go out well and he will open doors in whatever financial difficulty we might be going through that's very nice so you have 10 percent to to share to 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 our god yeah god uh, give me 100 percent. i give 10 percent back to him <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you budget you plan what else you got to uh, uh, i budget i plan i live below my means uh, yeah below your means and the first one was the first one is that I save 80% of my income. Oh, uh, yeah, the 80%. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> good to know and good to tips out there. So, hope I actually, everyone knows about it, I'm sure, but it's just the practice applying yeah, it. You need someone to <laughs> nudge them. And, you know. Yeah. Financially, right? If let's say you're going to have business costs, Right, make sure that you are covered for at least two years. Wow, how do you calculate that? For example, if you're gonna get a rent of a shop, mm-hmm. right, and it's gonna cost you two thousand, and you have a headcount, you have a staff, mm-hmm. right, make sure that you have the salary already in your bank account, mm-hmm. right? Because most business that fail, I see, is because they do not have budget planning. Mm-hmm. Okay, they do not have the cost benefit analysis. Mm-hmm. They do not have the projection of the business. Thus, mm-hmm. it led to the failure, right? That is one of the reasons. Uh, another reason is that they are able to bring money, but they tend to reinvest back into their business and the cycle just go on. But what about the small business owners? That's just like one man show. I'm sure you know a lot, right? Okay. So how can they manage yeah. everything? First and foremost, you you must get you must get your business plan in place first, right? Mm-hmm. And I always say start with baby steps, right? Start with a one month goal, three months milestone, six months milestone, one year. Instead of looking it as such a big goal, mm-hmm. cut them down into smaller goals. Okay. Then if you don't have the kind of money, get a bank loan. <laughs> bankers, yeah, or okay. get investors on board, yeah. We are 
ending and this is my final question or i call it highlight okay every interview wow that's fast time good time time yeah, fast, it's fast yeah, no? join in. that's great that's great and um i think during this pandemic time i always try to i'm very optimistic person and i'm very so, uh, solution oriented person you know and i know it's not it's not easy every day but you gotta find ways why find ways to make things you know a reasonable solution mm -hmm. uh, probable yes so how do you make yourself optimistic i meditate in the word of god wow. i talk to people who are positive i basically just surround myself with positivity not just mm -hmm. people in terms of the things i read and watch you know there's so much negative news going on um, you know, honestly such news make us feel very demoralizing and i would advise people to uh, read again do not read do not indulge into this news yeah. so most importantly um always count your blessing be grateful you know have a gratitude list before you sleep thank yeah. god for three things that i has that that you have in life or has happened in your life that's good i practice the same i always um, have the gratitude attitude you know it's very very uh enjoyable interesting thank you for inspiring in terms of empowering women like me to start maybe investing and start about uh, you know making whatever savings we have into invest in something double or triple yeah. and to take that kind of risk with the learnings that we can learn from you so speaking of learning from you so share with us where we can find your business so where we can find you okay you see you see the you see my virtual background right okay yes. so this is my instagram yes uh, oh this side right yes. uh, ask michelle lee right i'm always active on instagram yeah you can always direct message me there i'll mm -hmm. reply um, whenever i see it that's good and, and uh, get touch. yeah get connected yeah do you offer kind of um, free first consultation in singapore if let's say they wanted to check what service do you have uh, not ah, okay so uh i do offer free first consultation uh on certain period of my calendar it really depends if let's say i'm busy then i will not they usually I'll charge. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, but that's good to know. So mm -hmm. yeah, so great. So there you go. Uh, people out there, if you're based in Singapore, she can definitely assist you further with the website or the email and the, the social media accounts that she has on her yeah, yeah, yeah. Place screen. You can ask me anything even about <laughs> cryptocurrency. Yeah, I, I'm more yeah. I'm so excited to share about cryptocurrency. I'm excited to hear from you on that. So yeah. So once again, I um, I hope that you're gonna make it for the awards, and the awards will be uh, released the result July. Seven of July, yeah. First or second? Seven, seven. Uh, seven of July. So uh, good yeah. luck. But Thank anyway, that's already a big achievement, being part of the 280 submissions. You're on the final, so that's already a good good Thank thing and yeah because you're doing amazing uh you're also balancing of sharing not only your uh financial but also uh, tips and knowledge that you have to learn uh, to to help more people like us women so thank you thank you thank you so much thank appreciate you. the time thank you everybody thanks good night have a good day bye bye